Proper patient preparation is an important part of this procedure. We prefer to shave and surgically prep our patients prior to anesthetizing them because they're usually high-risk patients. In the surgery room, we prepare the patient by placing in sternal recumbency with the head gently rolled over a towel uh, and taped to the table. This will stretch the skin and allow for easily a surgical procedure. Now we have the patient prepped. Uh, I prefer to use uh, huck towels over the, the neck area. Uh, the paper drapes tend to move around a lot and get, cause a little bit of disorientation. You'll notice that we also made a small uh, mark here, about an inch and a half from the base of the skull. This is where the tube is going to, to be placed on a cat. Uh, it can be placed a little further back on larger dogs because you want the tube to extend as far back past the ribs as possible. The tube itself consists of a silicone tube with fenestrations in the terminal end. Uh, it uh, has a skirt which is going to be secured to the patient and it has a lure connector. We also include a needless injection site which is going to be screwed into place for treatment. The stylet which is used to place the tube uh, is, is first moistened and it's, the whole tube can be moistened to allow for easier placement. Feed the stylet down the tube and lock it in place. Next we're going to make a small incision right in the location of the X. By the way, this is the base of the skull right here. These are the shoulders. We're going to make a small incision with a number 11 blade and make sure it goes deep into the subcutaneous tissues. And we're going to take a hemostat and just open that incision just a slight bit, get into the sub-Q. With the tube uh, stylet combination in place, we're going to moisten that again. And we're going to slip that through that incision. Now we're going to start to slide. In very thin cats, we're going to meet some resistance right over the shoulders. And then the tube is going to slide on into place. In the fatter cats, generally, the tube will just, will just slide on pretty easily. But don't, don't worry about that resistance. I just went through it right there. Now I'm picking up the tube right here and allowing it just to feed through my fingers and forcing it right down the side. We want to place this tube just off the midline. We don't want to place it right down the midline. Uh, if we have to change the tube, if we should get an infection or a blockage, by having the tube on one side or the other, we always have the other side to go back to. Once we feed that tube all the way down uh, so that the skirt covers the incision, we're going to disconnect the stylet, hold the end of the tube so that we don't start to pull it back out, and work that stylet loose. A little bit here and then grabbing the tube. Like so. And we want to make sure that we're, the, the tube is fully inserted. We're going to now suture uh, the tube in place. I like to use 2-0 or 3-0 bronamid. Uh, you want to avoid sutures that if the cat scratches, they may break easily. Uh, we haven't found silk to work very well. Uh, the nylon sutures tend to break down after a few weeks. Uh, our goal here is for this tube to stay in place for, for months to a year. And over that course of time, some sutures may need to be replaced. But we want to use the stronger sutures that are still comfortable for the patient. It's important to begin the suturing uh, at the 5 and 7 o'clock position on the tube. Uh, that way, the tube's not going to start to slide out as you're, as you're suturing, your, tying your other sutures. We're going to go ahead and and start right here. I like to get about a quarter inch bite in the skirt of the tube and then reach under and get just about the same bite underneath the skin. And when we, when we tie these sutures, we just want to lay that skirt against the skin we don't want to uh, pull it tight where that suture is going to tend to cut in. The second suture is placed in the 7 o'clock position. Again, we take about a quarter of an inch of the skirt. Now, this skin is very tough under here, so you want to use a sharp 
strong needle and we're going to take a quarter and an eighth inch of skin directly onto where that suture lays. What I found is that the um, cats, if they do break a stitch, that the skin is, is not very sensitive and they really don't object to placing another stitch or replacing a stitch without an anesthetic. They seem to re respond more to the local than they do to um, the needle. The next stitch is going to be placed at the 12 o'clock position and then we're just going to fill in around. Again, about a quarter of an inch bite. This skirt is quite tough. It has a Dacron material built into the silicone. However, if a cat is very aggressive, they still can tear the silicone and shorten the life of the tube. So what we'll frequently do is make a little sock uh, that goes over this and protects the whole apparatus, at least until the cat gets used to it. A lot of times it helps the clients too. They'd rather not look at this. Now we're just going to fill in the rest of the stitches about every 10 minutes around the clock, basically. Again, using the same technique. We want to be sure not to, to tie these stitches tight. We just want to lay the two, the skirt down against the skin without cutting through the skin. And now we're, uh, we're finishing up these sutures. Put this last suture in. And we just want to um, be sure that it's secure and uh, that the whole skirt is, is sutured snugly, but, but as you can see, the, uh, there's a little bit of space in there under each suture. I want to mention that in, in long-haired cats, if, um, if they start to get a lot of hair growing under there, it's easy enough to reach in and actually you could remove a stitch or you can, I find that it's, it's pretty easy just to reach in and, and grab it and kind of keep that hair trimmed. Uh, in a later part of the table, we're going to talk about a little bit of maintenance uh, of, the, uh, of the site. We'll discuss that. Uh, next, we're going to put the needless injection port. Now, this is a special port. This isn't a regular male adapter. It's just specifically designed for the needless clip locks we're going to be using with this system. We put that on snug. Um, the, uh, the next step, we're going to go ahead and, and remove the drapes from this patient, uh, and we're going to uh, hook up some fluids and, and run the fluids uh, so that we can, you can see exactly how that all works. Fluids run pretty much wide open through this system, uh, just about like they were running through a 16-gauge needle. Uh, you can feel the tube under the skin. It extends back to this point uh, on the cat and it's filling up with fluids uh, right now. It only takes about two minutes to run a patient 200 cc, so uh, the, there's very little restriction in the system. Well, we've run him enough just to be sure everything's going fine. I like to add uh, 500 milligram of sofazolin to the uh, first bag of fluids that I use uh, in, the sur in surgery, and I send that bag home uh, with the client uh, is the first bag of fluids that they're going to use just to cover any infections that we, we might have uh, pushed in through the skin. Uh, it's very important. Infection control in this system is very important. The, uh, these tubes can remain in place for up to a year if uh, we don't get a low-grade infection. A low-grade infection tends to uh, not really be reflected in the condition of the patient, but the uh, body will wall off the tube. They will develop a, a little tunnel around the tube where the fluids accumulate and they'll actually run back out the port. So that's uh, uh, certainly something we want to completely avoid. And if we follow the sterile technique that we outline uh, on this video and also uh, in our literature, uh, those should be held to a minimum.
To make your pet's treatment convenient and cost effective, Practivet provides a gift tube administration kit to your veterinarian. This kit includes all of the supplies that you will need for 30 treatments except for the fluids. The kit contains 30 gift tube fluid administration sets. To provide an economical set, Practivet has replaced the roller clamp with a simple pinch clamp. Each set contains a lure lock connector that will provide a secure connection to the clave during fluid delivery. To change the clave, first place the drape over the clave. Unscrew the clave by grasping the white connector that the clave attaches to. Clean the white port with diluted bleach solution. Remove the cover from the new sterile clave and screw clave in place. If the clave is tightly attached to the connector, it may be necessary to grasp the white connector with a hemostat while you unscrew the clave. Place a new protective cap on the clave. This completes the clave change. 